The Red Smith Lecture in Journalism honors a Notre Dame alumnus and Pulitzer Prize winner who's widely recognized as the most accomplished sports writer, emphasis on the word writer, of the 20th century. The Smith Lecture Series began in 1983, and to celebrate the 25th anniversary, Tim Russert, the moderator of Meet the Press and Washington Bureau Chief of NBC News, delivered this year's lecture in April at Notre Dame. Tragically, these remarks are his last major statement about journalism in America. Here are some portions of Tim Russert's Red Smith Lecture, When Politicians Meet the Press. Much has changed in the 60 years of Meet the Press, or the 25 years since James Reston gave this first talk. 90% of us no longer watch the evening news at 6.30. Back then it was Uncle Walter, Walter Cronkite, or Huntley, Brinkley, Chet, and David. But, and yet I am ever so more convinced that viewers are now getting more information. C-SPAN is different than Larry King Live. The information spectrum is broad and vast. There are blogs on the left, blogs on the right, and yet they're different than the editorial page of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal in terms of their tone and many times their civility. But I believe there is still a deep and abiding recognition in the value of the so-called mainstream media. It's not enough to simply confirm your political views by only watching or accessing outlets that reinforce your views and do not challenge them. That is what I believe is a simple but important premise. Why? Because in all my discussions with presidents, both while in office and after they left, and their advisors while in office and after they left, in my reading of history, particularly presidential history, I am ever more convinced that a leader cannot make tough decisions unless he or she is asked tough questions. It is the only vehicle that brings them to closure, that forces any sense of intellectual rigidity, that forces them to find a way to reconcile the political advice or the political pressures brought to bear. It will not be enough in a democratic society to simply have uh, uh, those who, on the left or right, who are be pamphleteers and unwilling to challenge the views of people they support because it would not be politically correct. Tough questions need not be the loudest or the most sensational or the most theatrical, but rather probing and hopefully incisive. How do you prepare for this presidential race as a journalist or as moderator of Meet the Press? It is essential that I do what I didn't do when I was in college. I had been taught that if I would read my lesson before class, show up at class on time or perhaps early, get a good seat, pay close attention, take copious notes, review my notes after class, the exam would be easy. I know they were right. I did not do it. But it is what I do now, each and every day. Newspapers are central to what I do, another form of mainstream media. They are invaluable in the work product because of the number of people and the resources they generally have. I read the New York Times and the Washington Times. I read the New Republic and the National Review. I read Nation and Human Events. I read left, right, and center. Many of my friends say that I now have confused myself and they might be right. <laughs> but I think it is imperative that an independent journalist, someone who is trying to ascertain to the very best of his or her ability, what is the truth 
of a candidate's positions? What is their consistency? What is their intellectual grasp and, and understanding of the issues confronting us? That we accept another premise, and that is neither party or neither ideology has a monopoly on good ideas or the truth. It is essential that we come to grips with that. And whether the president is Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton, or John McCain or Hillary Clinton or Barack Obama, that our mission does not change.